Good morning, today we are going to talk about the optics clustering algorithm. Optics stands for ordering points to identify the clustering structure. The authors of, of this algorithm are these men right here, and the original paper was published in 1999. So the basic idea of the algorithm is to create an achievability chart. Each sample is assigned a reachability distance and a point within the cluster's ordering attributes. So these two attributes are only assigned when the model is adjust and are used to know which cluster it belongs to. Uh, about the categorization, uh, it is based on density, which means that it identifies different clusters within the data depending on how many points are clustered in a region. Uh, the most important features of the algorithm are, number one, its memory cost, because optics algorithm requires more memory than other similar algorithms, and this is because it keeps a priority queue to know which is the next data point. And number two, uh, optic use a few parameters, because it does not require to maintain the epsilon, that in addition is only given in the pseudocode to reduce the time taken. Uh, now, about the type of data the algorithm supports, optics only works with numerical data, given the need for Euclidean distance calculation. Categories are out of the equation. Uh, we created this flowchart based on the pseudocode, and this is the main loop of optics, and it does the following. Um, optics takes four arguments, the set of objects over which the algorithm is intended to be implemented, epsilon or simply EPS, which is the radius that defined that defines if the elements are categorized are close or not. The minimum of points or midpoints, which is a threshold that determines how many points a cluster must continue to be considered as such. And the ordered file, which are the data from which the set of data to which the algorithm will be applied, presumably a database or a dataset. So the file, which must be ordered, opens. It initializes a four cycle that starts in one, advances one steps per iteration, and whose, whose output conditions is to have covered all the set of objects. Now the object is obtained uh, using the variable i as an index of the set of objects list, that is, for example, uh, the set of objects dot get and the i. Now, if the object in question has not been processed, the order of that cluster is expanded, like right here. And this is achieved by calling an expand order cluster function, which is right here. Here is the expand cluster order function, and then we call it right here. It's all this block of code, which is not included in this flowchart because this is only the main uh, loop. So, this expand order cluster function uh, receives parameters as parameters, the set of objects, um, the object in question, um, epsilon, the minimum of points, and the ordered file. Here's an example, and for this example, let's assume that we have an epsilon of 6, which is the radius, and a mean points of 5. Uh, this is that if we have uh, 5 points, we now can have a cluster, that's some kind of threshold. Now, we draw another radius, which is this right here so that by making a circle we can cover the minimum points threshold. We will call this new radius epsilon prime and in this case it is 3. This epsilon um, prime and in, is also known as the core distance of p and it is the minimum distance that makes p, which is this point, a core object. These are both terms that we use in dbscan. So um, the distance from p to any of the points within the epsilon prime range, the, within this, um, will be epsilon prime. But the distance for any point from P, let's say this point P, to another point Q2, like this one, which is outside the epsilon prime range, will be the Euclidean distance, which is right here. Distance function of P and Q2. Now, if we use the reachability distance as threshold, we can generate a graph like the following one, in which the data below, the horizontal line, will be the data to which the dbscan algorithm will be applied. For example, if this one is, is the threshold that we want, all data which is uh, below this line is going, uh, is going to be applied at dbscan algorithm. And the data that is above this horizontal line uh, is going to be considered as noise. Thank you, Alan. And now let's take a look at the implementation of this algorithm in Python. This was implemented by these two guys, so thank you to them. And it is available on the sklearn library. Here we are going to first import the necessary libraries. 
Then we are going to generate sample data so it looks great in our example. Uh, we can see here that we generated six different clusters. Then we are going to make or go from the reachability plot to a dbscan plot. Right here we, are, we can see that we use the parameters generated by the optics algorithm and we are going to use two different epsilons. One here is 0 0.5 and this one is equal to 2. And then we are going to plot the results. And this is a lot of things going on here, but right here we can see the result of it, and which is loading. And as you can see here, where the line uh, cuts the reachability plot, it generates two different dbscans plots. Right here is on 0 0.5 equal to this graph. And in this one is equal to 2, equal to this one. And as you can see here, these points are counted as noise. These ones right here. Thank you, Svaldo. Now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of optics. One major advantage of this approach is that compared to other clustering algorithms, it does not limit itself to just one global parameter setting. Instead, the augmented cluster ordering contains information which is equivalent to the density-based clustering corresponding to a broad range of parameter settings and thus is a versatile basis for both automatic and interactive cluster analysis. And talking a little bit of the disadvantages of using this algorithm, first, it is not suitable for high-dimensional spaces meaning that it is infeasible to apply it in its current form to a database containing several million high-dimensional objects. Consequently, the most interesting question is whether we can modify the optics algorithm so then we can trade off a limited amount of accuracy for a large gain in efficiency. Also, incre incrementally managing a closer ordering is another of the improvements of this algorithm that still needs to be done. Finally, for our conclusion, as optics algorithm comes as a generalization of the dbscan algorithm, it is important to state some of its differences. First, optics requires more memory and more computer power as it maintains a priority key to determine the next data point, which is the closest to the point currently being processed. Also, it does not need to maintain the epsilon parameter and is only given in the above pseudo code to reduce the time taken compared to the DB scan. Finally, it is important to understand that this technique does not segregate the given data into clusters. It merely produces a reachability distance plot and it is upon the interpretation of the programmer to cluster the points accordingly.